Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna talk about pointers. First, we're gonna start with JavaScript, look at the way that it does things, and then we're gonna look at Go and how it compares to JavaScript. This video was very difficult to make. This is my second time trying to make this video because I didn't know how much to assume about you, whether you did a computer science course and you know, you know, memory allocation, heap versus stack. I'm gonna assume that you know as little as possible. All right, so I'm declaring a variable A and I'm assigning zero to it, and I'm declaring B and I'm assigning an object to it. And then I declare a function called mutate argument, which receives a primitive value and an object and it mutates both and then I call that with a and b and then we print them so let's run this and see what happens as you can see a is still zero even though I incremented it because p is a copy of zero is the value zero uh, however when I do edit the object you see that it does change it's not zero anymore it's 30 why because o is a reference to the same object so b and o both point to the same object in memory. So if I mutate O, B is gonna see it. And if I mutate B, O is gonna see it because at the end of the day, they both have working on the one object in memory and they're mutating so you can see it through both references. So in JavaScript, it's like you're always working with pointers when you're talking about objects. So the main thing I want you to take away from here is that in JavaScript, you don't have a choice. You always pass a reference to an object. You never pass the object itself as a copy, always a reference to an object. But let's look at Go and how it does things. All right, so this is a similar example in Go. I first have to define a type struct with ID and H, just like we had in our JavaScript example. Then I declare a mutate args function, just like before, it receives the primitive type and a struct, and it mutates both of them. Then I create a A variable with zero and a B variable with a struct. And this is overly verbose for Go. I'm just doing it to try to make it look like the JavaScript example. You don't have to actually do this. Then I call my function mutated arcs with both parameters and then I print them. You'll see that unlike JavaScript, neither of them was changed. This O, even though I assigned 30 to it, it was B still has a struct that points to zero. How come things didn't change? How come this is still zero? Meter arcs is receiving an integer and it's receiving a struct. Now, not a reference to a struct, it's receiving a whole struct. So what Go has to do behind the scenes is it has to take B, make a copy of that, make a copy of this, and pass that over here. Mutate arcs is working with this local copy of a person. So when I'm editing the copy, this B is not gonna be affected because they are separate objects in memory. So if you look down here, that's what you see. Now, if you wanna replicate the behavior that you have in JavaScript, what you have to do is you have to pass in a pointer here. So if I pass in a pointer, you'll see that this doesn't work anymore because mutate args receives a pointer to a person, but I'm passing in a whole struct. So what I have to say is I have to say, I want the memory address at which B is stored. B is stored somewhere in memory, I want that memory address, and I pass that. And if I run this example now, you see that it works, that the age is now changed by mutate, because ultimately B and O are pointing to the same struct in memory. So this is what JavaScript is kind of doing for you under the scenes. It's kind of receiving a pointer and it's passing around references. Now, what about this P? Remember that in JavaScript, no matter how much you increment a P, A, would never change because you're receiving a copy of this value. In Go, you can do that. You can say, I wanna reference to an integer. And then you come here and you pass in a reference to this A. So this zero is stored somewhere in memory and you're passing the address of that to this function. Now see that this now doesn't work. Invalid operation, why? Because P is not an integer anymore. P is an address and I'm trying to increment that address. So I'm trying to say, hey, you're pointing at this piece of memory now I want you to point at another piece of memory and you can't do that in Go. You can do it in C, however, but in Go, you can't. What you have to say here is not I want to increment the memory address at which I'm pointing. What you have to say is I want to, I just realized this looks really bad. Okay, but I have to increment what's inside this address, not the actual pointer, but the content of the pointer. You do that by doing something called dereferencing. This asterisk before a pointer says, I wanna take the content of this address and increment that. So if we do that, you'll see that now P and A point to the same position in memory. So when I increment that, A is gonna point to one. Now this is something you couldn't do in JavaScript, but you can in Go. All right, so now you might be wondering, okay, but look here, O is a pointer to a person. So I shouldn't be able to do dot 
age because this O is a memory address. It's not an actual person. So I would have to do the same, th the same thing here. I would have to do a dereference and then access age. So O being a pointer doesn't have an age. What's inside of that memory address that has an age. So you have to dereference and then access age. And that, that would be true that you are correct. Go is because this is such a frequent operation. Go does it under the hood. So whenever you grab a pointer and you do dot age, this should throw the same error as this here. And it should require us to have the, this asterisk. But because it's so normal to do this, go automatically goes to that memory address and takes the contents of the address. The same thing applies to methods. So let's create a method on a person set age. Now let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this function too. Let's get rid of this too. This is, this is the same as what we just had. Okay. So I'm going to print this before and I'm going to print it afterwards. Set age and I'm going to pass in 30 and then let's print it again. And you'll see that it hasn't changed because just like a function, I'm operating on a copy of a person when I call this, which may be a little counterintuitive if you're not used to this. So what you want to do if you're mutating the object is you want to receive a pointer. Okay, so go will invoke this not on a copy of B, but on the actual B. Okay, and then you'll get your desired result. You see now it works. This is called a value receiver because it's a value that receives the invocation of set age. This is called a pointer receiver. If you want to mutate the receiver, you always need a pointer to it, not a value so that, that Go doesn't create copies when you create, when you invoke these methods. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you is the difference in memory between a struct and a pointer to a struct. So let's do that. I'm going to create B, which is going to be a person and I'm going to create B2, which is going to be a pointer to that person. And then I'm going to uncomment this. So here I'm using the unsafe package, which is a package that is unsafe. So you shouldn't use it, but I'm, we're using it to look at the size of the memory that these things take up. So let's clear this and let's run this. Okay. So you see that the size of the person is 16. The size of B is 16. Why? Because this is a struct here. B has a struct and this struct has two integers. So that's eight bytes each times two, 16. Whereas B2 is just a memory address and I am in a 64 bit architecture. So that is eight bytes. If I add another field here, like hair count, now this is going to be three integers. So this is going to be 24. Let's run this again. So 24. But B2 is still 8 because B2 is always going to be just a memory address, whereas this will grow in size. So if you have very large structs and you have functions that receive values instead of references to values, so our mutate arc from before. So if we have a function like this and we pass in a person, Go has to copy that struct here because I'm not passing a reference. So this thing gets the whole person and that copying back and forth can get expensive if your structs are really big, but you maybe shouldn't worry about that up front. And sometimes it's safer to operate on a copy because like you saw, like you saw, you can edit it as much as you want and the original is not going to get changed. So don't be too eager with the optimizations. So the last thing I want to show you is the difference between declaring a pointer to a struct and an, and a struct. So let's do that. Let's change this and say B is going to be a pointer to a person, whereas B2 is going to be a person. Let's look here now. The size of B is 8 because it's a memory address. The size of B2 is 24. So what, hap so what that means is that Go creating an empty, when I declare it like this, Go is creating a person for me in memory. Okay. And if I print the contents of B2, you'll see that it has an ID, it has an age, Everything's set to their zero value. However, with a pointer, yeah, it's a memory address, but the default is nil. And that's a really big difference because here I'm saying, hey, B is going to point to a person, but I never initialize that. This is the equivalent in JavaScript of doing something like this. B here in JavaScript would be undefined because I declared it, but I didn't assign anything to it. There is no equivalent for this in JavaScript because everything is a reference, right? But here, when I declare V2, not as a reference to a person, but as a person, Go will create that person in memory for me. Everything will be set to their zero value. So the zero value of a pointer is nil. Okay. If I didn't want this to be nil, I could do something like new 
new person. The new operator would create the person in memory and would return a pointer to that. So let's see how this goes. You see that now B is not nil anymore. It's a reference to this in memory. If you still have a lot of questions about this, don't worry. Pointers are gonna get a lot easier to understand as you use them. But it's useful that you know the difference between passing a pointer and passing a value. To sum everything up, if you pass a pointer, to an object and you mutate it, you're mutating the original because now you have two things referencing the same thing. Whereas if you don't pass a pointer, if you pass a struct, you're passing a copy of that struct and you're operating on the copy. Now, for those of you that know the difference between a heap and a struct, you might think that v B2 here is allocated in the stack, whereas B is allocated in the heap. Now B2 might be allocated in the stack, but Go has to do escape analysis because if I return, main does not return anything, but if I were to return a reference to B2, too. If you're a C programmer, you'll you'll know that this is gonna become a dead reference once the function ends. That's terrible because the stack frame for this function is gonna be destroyed. So in order to avoid that, Go has to do escape analysis. And and if it sees that references to something on the stack would would leak out of the stack, it has to allocate it on the heap. Topic for another video. Just wanted you to know that. All right, guys. So this is everything I have for you today. Uh, the next video is gonna be on slices. So I'll see you guys in the next one.